This is Jeffrey Cleveland, Chief Economist at Peyton and Regal, with another Macro Minute. This week, drop the dot plot. That's our message. The FOMC met September 16th and 17th in Washington, D.C., and they renewed or gave us an updated dot plot, which if you're not following these things closely, is the estimate by members of the FOMC for the Fed funds rate at the end of each year from now until the long run. So 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017 and in the long run. So each of the 17 members gets to put their little dot where they think Fed funds should be. So it's called the dot plot. The problem we have is twofold. First, the point of the dot plot is to convey to the market some useful information about the path of the federal funds rate over the next few years. Uh, it fails to do that. Why? Well, most of the FOMC members agree that Fed funds rate will be near zero this year. There is widespread disagreement in 2016. For example, a couple of members see the Fed funds rate at only 50 basis points in 2016, while a couple of others see it as high as 4%. So there's this wide dispersion, which doesn't convey any useful information to the marketplace. The second big factor is this week, interest rates across the Treasury yield curve have risen, two-year yields, three-year yields, and even 10-year yields, because the market looked at the dot plot and decided that FOMC members were anticipating higher rates than the market had factored in. The problem with that is a lot of the members of the FOMC that are more hawkish have skewed this dot plot higher than we think it really will end up being. So the dot plot fails to convey any future information. It's sending, it's spooking the market a little bit on interest rates. And we think bottom line investors should ignore it and the FOMC should drop it. So drop the dot plot.